Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to an episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast uh, with a very special guest, Mr. Joseph Green. Welcome to the show, comedian, actor, model. Thank you, Lewis. United Australia Party member. <laughs> Condolences. <laughs> Thank sorry about you. your loss. Thank you. Uh, we'll bounce back. We yeah. will bounce back. What's the strategy for next year? Uh, spending more money on advertising? Yeah, more money, uh, more brainwashing, more uh, just just deeper policy. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but you don't need to know. I think the, what's the real big effect of the Australian election is not going to be how the country changes from like going the Liberal to Labor, but I think what's really going to change is I think a lot of people are just going to be really disillusioned with the idea of advertising in general after the amount of money that the UAP put into ads. What does it do, though, these ads? Mm-hmm. Not nothing, really. They got less votes than uh, the legalized weed party. Yeah, I mean, like they, got, I, they spent eighty million dollars, and and they were defeated by dude weed. Yeah, how cool's weed, bro? <laughs> but people know what they. I, I don't think it's the ads that are changing yeah. people's minds. No, like when I drove here, the, the liberal lady in this electorate yeah. putting out huge billboards. She's everywhere. She, vote Sean Coombs. Like, uh, Which is a pretty Frankston name. Like, you've got to give it to the Liberals. They put their most Frankston-sounding woman wh- to represent What is this electorate. seat? Who won this seat? Yeah, Labor. Labor, Labor won this seat. They took it from Pauline Hanson. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. No. <laughs> who, 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 but that is pretty wh- believable. Was it already a Labor seat? I think it was. Was it? Oh, it switched this, oh. this ele- election. We should know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was liberal because I noticed something like the literally three days out from the election, they did hard rubbish collection for Frankston. So they were like, here's something for you fucking peasants. Vote for us. <laughs> really? I reckon they did it on purpose. Because wow. we had heaps of hard rubbish. We just moved. So we kept like going to the council and going, when is hard rubbish? And they were like, we don't have a date scheduled yet. We'll let you know. And then the election comes around, they go, hey, guys, look how good we are. Here's a little treat for you. And did they put in a little pamphlet with, yeah. with it? Mm. Oh, wow, that's a sneaky manoeuvre. I think it was, it was the Liberal who won in 2019. I thought so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it was. And yeah. how, how big was the swing? Uh, last time, only a few hundred votes. This time, it was 10,000 votes. Wow, okay. big swing. Yeah. yeah. It's a big swing. Is, what percentage does that come to, though? Probably 2%. There's a lot of people who live in Frankston. 52% voted for... Oh, no, no, it was Labor. 52% voted for Peter Murphy, which is Labor. Yeah. yeah. 47% voted for Chris Curfew. All right, so it was always Labor. That's huge. All right. You don't have a Greens candidate down in Frankston? No, no, we just have Green dealers. <laughs> a lot of people selling weed out in the area. But literally, you mustn't have a Greens candidate if, if they're making 99% of the entire I, I think I think the problem with the Greens here in Frankston is is the, is the it's bloody gay. <laughs> vote, for, vote for the Greens, man. That's bloody gay. I'm a fucking tradie. Mate, Greens are pretty yuppie. I mean, no, no, obviously Green, no Frankston's are. pretty yuppie. Now. It, it's definitely gentrifying it's, it's like in real time. It's a very bougie place. The way, the gentrifying area you live in. Yeah, yeah. It's a very bougie place. Yeah, people people think, oh, man, you live in Frankston. It's like, dude... I, I, you, you have a like perception of Frankston that's like ten years old. Yeah, it's becoming nice. Yeah, like there's a reason why I moved here. It's because I couldn't afford there, and that that's that's what it is. You yeah. know, that's yeah. people who can't afford the area they grew up in. They move further out, and so on, and so forth. And pretty soon, you know, Frankston will be the new South Yarra. I'm calling it now. But it's it's been on, it's it's on the up. It's, I mean, it's on the up. It's a yeah, wise investment. It really is. Get in on the Frankston train. I've been a big proponent of Frankston. I hope to grow the area, and slowly but surely, I'll turn it into a liberal state. <laughs> Literally a state. I reckon that Frankston should be its own state. Did did we do we ascertain whether Labor already had this seat or not? This is the uh, the four weeks post election recap. By the oh, way, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we're pre recording this this episode. What day is it today, Keela? What's the date? Monday, the twenty. Well, that doesn't really help them. The twenty third of May. Monday happens every week. It's the twenty third of May. The election uh, is on the twenty first. This is coming out. I'm I'm currently off my fucking head on morphine right now. I think I'm going to get the good stuff. When when this will come out? Yeah, yeah. This comes in four out. weeks. You'll still be on morphine. I think so. For four weeks, you're going to be on that. I'm, I don't know. That depends crazy. how much I like it. Have you ever taken it before? On week three, I might be rocking up to the doctors, going, "Oh, my fucking face still hurts, doc. Please." 
Yeah, they they give it out very sparingly. Yeah. Because I had a whole operation last year. Yeah. And oxytocin is it? Oxytocin is a type of morphine, I think. Isn't it? I thought it was oxycontin. Probably is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably not saying it right. Yeah. But th- you pr- you might get that or a or, variation. I don't know. All my that. friends refer to it as oxy's bra. Yeah, oxy's. Yeah. So that they, I was in so much pain, and he wouldn't give it to me. Well, they won't tell. They won't tell me what I'm gonna get. Which which makes me think I'm gonna get heroin, you know? <laughs> like if they if the doctors won't tell you what pain pills you're gonna get, you're getting something fucking sick. Oh, you'll get the oxy's for sure. I think will. so. Yeah. I'm. I have never been high. I've never. I've never been drunk. I've never taken drugs. I've never even smoked weed in my life. I'm really starting strong. You've this never, is gonna be the first time ever. You've never done any drugs. Don't you know this about me? I, I was aware that you're like pretty clean. Yeah. But like you've never drank alcohol at all. I've tasted it. I know what it tastes like. I've had like sips of beer, but I've never had a full drink ever. How much coffee do you drink? I have like one or two a day. A day, okay. Yeah. It's actually I've actually started drinking less coffee now that I'm using my CPAP machine. I think I was using coffee to keep me oh, conscious for a while. Wow. I used to have like one a day and then I started having like towards the end of this, having like three. And I wow. was like, maybe this is bad. So you're prepared that the oxy will have a big effect on you? I'm worried. What if What if I go, what if it changes my whole worldview and I go, you know what? Being sober is boring. This is fucking awesome. Chances it's, are I will. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. I'm kind of thinking that also... I've got to be, obviously I would have to be a crazy minority of Australians going in and like they've, I've never even been drunk before. So I'm kind of worried that the standard amount of anesthesia will kill me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like everyone's, everyone in Australia with our binge drinking culture is coming up with a bit of immunity to like getting knocked out under the influence. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have a wild time. Yeah. I could be dead right now. People could be crying. Listen to this. You know, oh man, he called it. I can't believe it. This will be amazing. This will be this. You can make an NFT out of this episode that will really. I'm planning to. Yeah. The, the, you know, your grandchildren. Mm. Absolutely, we'll be, be, tr- we'll be trading on 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 the Ethereum mainnet. For but years. You, your 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 uh, take. I know this is a digression. Yeah. But uh, your take on EFT, NFTs and yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. Friends of mine, they didn't know you sent it to me. Like this guy's broken it down so well. Really? Yeah, they loved it. On what? Uh, on YouTube or on, on, on Instagram? On YouTube. On YouTube, yes. Yeah. yeah. There was like a seven-minute clip and you were talking about cri- different cryptocurrencies. Yes. And it was great. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's why we're here in this house. So, 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 <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it's cool when friends of mine yes. that don't know you yeah. or like know you through me yeah. Just send it to me, not know, even knowing the connection. That, like, is, that is, that is, what are you listening to, Keelan? You're watching something else? No, More interesting? Accident. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that is always a little bit of a weird thing of being like a known person is when people share your clips to your friends who don't know that you're friends. Yeah. And they go, oh man, my auntie sent me your video. Oh, really? It happens all the time. That's yeah. cool. Um. But what's what's your take on NFTs and crypto right now? Right now? On the 23rd of May. Right now to all of my investors who got in three months ago. Yeah. Uh, there's help out there for you. Oh, shit. And if, if you're in a tough time, there's uh, the suicide hotline. There's also programs out there that can really, really help you in this trying period. And it will get better. I've been there before. Um, my advice to people who got in there... Uh, maybe like a year ago and then sold just before all of this happened. Um, maintaining a house is very difficult and, I've, and I'm currently in there. But I think that NFTs is uh, right now, 99% of them are big fucking scams, but they will truly run the, the planet and the way we do things. So just to sure. clarify, when you're saying bad luck, are you talking about buying like Bitcoin or Ethereum? Any Bit- cryptocurrency at the moment as of recording is like really, really, really down. But, but the, the concept of NFTs, you've still got a lot of confidence in that. Yeah, 100%, of course. 100%. I think that most of them are complete bullshit and are genuinely like damaging to the environment and all that kind of stuff is like... This, the, the environment stuff is like overblown and there's some truth to it. What, what, how are they damaging to the environment? They use a lot of energy. So like every, basically cryptocurrency, all it is, is just a big public ledger. And every time a coin moves, all of the other coins can see it move so that you can't hack it. 
you yeah. know, to to take control of it, you would have to buy all of the coins, basically. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's as if if every dollar had a memory of where every other dollar was, of course. so that yeah. you know you couldn't say, "Oh, mine's I actually have a million of these." All of the other dollars would go, "No, you don't. Yeah. We can see your wallet. You've got nothing in there." Um, but I think that NFTs are are a are really cool technology. It's like cars. When cars were first invented, people on horses were like, why the fuck would I use a car? Yeah, yeah. They're loud, they're expensive, they're slow, they break down, yeah. they're damaging to the environment. Mm. Um, but, you know, things get better with time. I think it's I think it's a really interesting thing and I think that basically we're already kind of using NFTs anyway. Like people buy skins on Fortnite to make their character look different yeah, or their gun look point. different. You know, people buy uh, different versions of digital games. You're not buying anything. You're buying like a, a thing that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, people support me on Patreon. They're essentially buying digital products. I have like exclusive episodes that go out to people who are a Patreon supporter. Yeah. Not much difference between having a Patreon membership and having a Lewis Spears NFT that gives you exclusive access yeah. to a Discord. And yeah. it's the same thing. It it's just not called an NFT. Yeah. And you can't sell your membership. Yeah. So I think that what's going to happen is, especially with video games, you know, you will be able to sell a skin of a gun, you know, to a customer. And then that customer can take that gun and sell it to another customer. And 10% goes back to the company. Yeah. Right now, you can't trade skins in most games. So you just sell it to the customer and then it just stays there and then that's it. And then when the game dies, so do all of the skins. Yeah. Whereas if it's on cryptocurrency and, you know, Ethereum, it stays there forever even if the game does die. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can have really exciting things like historical items in games. So like you go all the way back to like RuneScape. Did you ever play RuneScape? No, no. I'm, I'm sort of not really in the gaming. Yeah. Zeitgeist yes. world. But RuneScape, one of the very first like super, super popular online games that lots of people played. Yeah. There were these things called party hats that were very rare. They were given out on a special occasion and they're worth heaps of money, real life money. Yeah. But if RuneScape ever dies, those items will just disappear. Imagine if those items were on a blockchain that could never be deleted and it was like a, you know, a record that lasts forever. You know, even when a game dies, the historical item that everyone assigns like a lot of value to because of their fond memories with the game, that mm. can last forever. Yeah. And that's when you have some fucking billionaire buy the most valuable yeah. item in yeah. the most fondly remembered blockchain game. Yeah. I think that's just how it's going to work. And I think that for a, it's just going to work because companies can make so much money out of them. Why sell a t-shirt when I could sell a digital product that costs next to nothing to create goes to a person. And if they ever choose to sell it for eternity, I will always get 10% of whatever they sell it for. So but you, you, the, one of the early points you made was that it's bad for the environment. Isn't that considerably less bad for the environment? If There you go. So, or am I wrong about that? No, you're, you're right. Like, yeah. so people go, oh, they're terrible for the environment. And it's like, have you seen the amount of energy and water and production that goes into a t-shirt? Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Or like food or anything. Like everything is bad for the environment. Unfortunately, that's the nature of being a human. Every time you transact anything, it's horrible for the environment. The banking system is awful for the environment. Cryptocurrency is quite bad, but it's becoming better. In fact, people who it's kind of, I'm trying to like really like make it simple because I don't have like the best understanding of it. So I try to explain it in simple terms because I'm a simple man. <laughs> but basically it's all run off big computers and processing. And every time a transaction is submitted or made, a computer solves a problem and that, cons that takes up energy. So that obviously burns fuel. Yeah, of course. And so the more energy you use, the more harmful it is for the environment but also the more expensive it is for the people who have these giant farms of computers solving problems. So they're yeah, actually yeah. incentivized to make it as, you know, uh, environmentally friendly as possible because that's cheaper. You run it all off solar, you run it all off, uh, you know, whatever you can to lessen your energy costs, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is less damage to the environment, which ends up being, you know, fine. One of, one of the points you made um, 
in the clip I watched yeah. was that one of the reasons that you felt so confident about the sustainability or viability of at least NFTs is that because young people are so conditioned to using like buying guns or weapons in a cyber world. Yeah, we're already th- doing th- it. That they would do that as adults as well. Mm. Like, you know, when when I was growing up, we would like have um, Tarzos and footy 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 cards. Useless and footy, f- footy NFTs, stickers. but real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean it's sort of doesn't make sense, but like tangible NFTs. Yes. Is yeah. what like a footy card yeah. is. That's that's what it is. But yeah. but I think young people now are like so much used to dealing with like digital content all the time. So it's more yeah. part of their norm. A hundred percent. Like the, the digital world I think is going to become indistinguishable from the real world at some point, maybe not in our lifetime, maybe at the end of our lifetime. But I think that I truly honestly think that if technology gets so good to the point where you could, you don't even have to put on a headset. Mm-hmm. I don't even like we wouldn't have been able to, conceive of phones back before there were telephones right we wouldn't be able to conceive of it yeah so i think there's going to be something yeah that will just you know it might be a fucking it could be a chip in our brains or whatever yeah. i'm not yeah. saying that's a good thing but it yeah. could happen yeah where you know you won't even have to put on a headset and you can step into this new world or this augmented reality or, yeah. or whatever and i think it'll just get to the point where people will start debating over which reality matters more I think that's what it'll get to is like, why would I care about this, the reality in which I was born when I can be whoever I want in this other reality? I can ditch all of the trauma and all of the bad friends or bad relatives that I have in this unfortunate reality I was born into. And I can have an actual job in this new reality where I can be a fucking dragon or I can be a a woman or I can be whatever I actually truly think that I am. And people will perceive me exactly as that because i designed me that's what it's gonna be when i play world of warcraft i'm a fucking orc warrior right but i'm not really because i'm touching a keyboard if i could just step into and i could feel it and 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 i wouldn't have to wear any gear or maybe i'm only just wearing a headset or whatever and some headphones and i step into it and i can't see in my peripheral vision my bedroom my whatever and it feels real and it is as real as my it's as real as my brain can perceive it to be and i'm truly having a better time in this world why wouldn't i prefer to be there all the time i don't think that's a good thing but i do think it's inevitable wow i mean you're you're in a very you've got some authority to talk about this and it may be a good transitional point because you've created such a like clear online persona for yourself and also in terms of like changing your uh who you are you're about to undergo this very process i'm i'm redesigning my avatar right as we speak and you told me something in this reality you told me something like minutes before we started which is you have a some input into what that will look like yeah which is crazy to me so that i'm currently recovering from the upper jaw surgery which shouldn't change me too much they're gonna get this and they're gonna pull it forward and widen it. And just to clarify, when you say you're recovering from it, when this is aired, when you're this recovering. When this is released. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And what's the... Because you're having this this week. Yeah. When are you having the bottom one done? The bottom one will be 12 to 18 months from now, oh, depending yeah. on how fast my teeth move. So the sleep apnea will be resolved by the lower jaw surgery. This top one isn't going to help me at all in terms of like relieving my symptoms. This is only happening so that when they move my lower jaw, I'll be able to close my mouth. Because if they just moved it, I will just be like that. I just have like a, oh, a wow. big overbite. So this is just moving my teeth. So my teeth will be less crowded. I'll have really nice straight teeth. And then depending on how far forward they have to move it, see how my cheekbones are here. And then I have like this big dip in there. That's all soft. I think that will be a little bit more full. And potentially my nose may even go like this a bit. Because currently it's being pulled down. Immediately or over Immedi- time? Immediately. Wow. My nose might go like that because it's not being pulled down by my lips and skin here because they'll be pulled forward Sorry, a bit. I'm going to sneeze. That's okay. <coughs> I forgive you. So it's pretty It's pretty crazy. And I guess my smile will be wider because I'll have like more 
more room in my teeth, in my mouth for teeth. And how long are you rocking the braces for? 12 to 18 months. So you get them off before this, you have the bottom jaw. So the way the, the way the surgeon explained it to me is the surgeon and the orthodontist working together to create a face that can breathe, basically. So, important. But the surgeon doesn't really understand the teeth and the orthodontist doesn't really understand the surgery. So they're kind of coming together. And the orthodontist, they explain, the surgeon explained it to me as the orthodontist gives the surgeon a map and tells him how where my teeth need to be so that they'll close. And then the surgeon makes that happen. So the braces, surgeon explained to me, are there before the surgery because they're almost like a map for him. How common is, is this surgery? Both individual surgeries are very common. Both of them at the same time are not. So and, and a lot of people have one or the other. So so many people at fans have gone, oh man, I had the surgery you're getting. I'm like, oh, which one? And they go, oh, the upper palate one. I'm like, did you get the j- lower jaw? They go, no, or the opposite happens. I had the lower jaw. Did you have the upper palate? No. And when so they my happen, face is tremendously fucked. Wow. And when <laughs> they happen, do they have braces as well or without braces? Usually, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because your teeth, your teeth, if you move like all of your teeth, like that whole you in your mouth, if you move it, you can't close. So you need to move the teeth too. Wow. The top one though, they take the palate out and they move it forward. But then they, they, they get it and then they also cut it in half and they widen it. So I'm going to have a fucked gap tooth. How long, how long will you have the gap for? Three months minimum. Oh, wow. So it will become really wide. G'day. Hey, Bobby. Hello. Hey, girl. Dog on pod, everyone. Welcome. Woohoo. So the gap tooth will be slowly closed by the braces. That's also why I have it on beforehand. Oh wow. To make that process a little bit faster. Wow. And, and I, I get this spacer put in the roof of my mouth on Wednesday before the two days before the surgery. Yeah. And that base because they, they cut it off, they detach the all of my teeth, every the bone that holds the upper teeth, they detach it and pull it forward. And then they cut it in half and widen it. And then the spacer is hooked around my molars, these side teeth. They're looped around two teeth on either side, basically to hold it in place. Because if you didn't have that there, it could just go like that and collapse inwards. Fragile, delicate thing. Yeah, so the bone will, will slowly close the gaps. So this the roof of my mouth will slowly close and fuse together and so will this because they cut all of it and, off. And the, the aspect of you having some input into how it looks, yeah. where, where does that come into play? Is that in the first so thing the first or the bottom surgery or both? is not going to change my looks too much. It will just make my smile a lot nicer and then it, I don't know, it might might bring my nose a bit forward and then maybe make my lips, but might make my lips look nicer because they'll be, Pushed out but is that because you're telling teeth. them to do that? Or? No, no. I don't have any input on how I'll look with the first one. The okay. second one, I have a lot of input on what I would like to look like. That's in 18 months? That's 12 to 18 months, yeah. depending on how quick my teeth move. Okay. And that's why they cut this in half, and then they extend it out. And then they also cut the tip of my chin off, and they move that forward and up. So I have a chin that matches my jawline, oh, I which see. will be very strong. All at once? All at once. And... I get to tell them like what type of jawline I would like to have. Uh, they'll scan my skull and kind of 3D generate my face. And then me and the surgeon will play the Sims on my head and like extend it out. Oh, so he'll back. show you in a 3D format. I think so, yeah. This is, are you happy this with this? This is what you could look like once you're here. Are you, are you a bit scared of that? Well, here's the thing, Joe. How many times have you gone to a hairdresser and gone, I would like this? And then they go, yeah, I can do that. And yeah. Then, and then you walk out and you go, they fucked it up. Exactly. That's fine though, because your hair grows back. Exactly. What if they do that to your skull? Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's terrifying. Well, I've also never, never really looked at my head and gone, oh, I wish I, I wish I looked like that, or I wish yeah. I didn't have this. Yeah. It's never been something that I've been particularly worried about. Like I can't think of any other operation that you would go through where you. Whether, mate, unless you're getting like really elective surgery like breast augmentations or something like this yeah. where you're saying this is what I want. Well, the surgeon, but when he does told this me happen? He, a lot of people, girls and guys, do this surgery purely cosmetically. 
So I'm getting it done because I've got very bad obstructive sleep apnea. Yes. But a lot of people do it just for a nice jawline. Yeah. But now you, you kind of have to play that game because that's what you've got that choice. Well, that's the thing. Like if I'm given the opportunity, like of course I would like to look as, as good as possible. But, but also I have a very strong, firm opinion that uh, incredibly attractive comedians make, incredibly <laughs> attractive people make poor comedians. <laughs> you might be the exception to the rule. A little bit. Like you and Pete Davidson are, are kind of like the only ones that... That's very sweet. Because how, like, how many people do you see like in comedians that everyone goes, fuck, they're so hot? Not too <laughs> many. Keelan's watching Netflix. Like there's Pete Davidson and then uh, who was the other person I said? You, I guess, who's quite known as attractive. Oh, but I'm talking like super famous. There's Pete Davidson. A lot of girls think he's really hot. Women, who's really hot and really funny? Are you, uh, I mean, there's heaps of a good... Amy American. Schumer was, she was considered quite a hot girl when she was doing the Comedy Central stuff when before she kind of had a big downfall. Yeah. I think that uh, career-wise, not looks-wise, but, you know... Um, oh, Sarah Silverman, she's good-looking. Sarah looking, Silverman was quite a hot... But, but I wouldn't call her like, like a 10. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's the limit. I think of hotness. Maybe uh, who was the, uh, Chris DeStefano? He's a good-looking guy. He's just yeah, last, I would say he's he's island. almost like movie handsome. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's probably pretty good-looking. Who else? Who else? I mean, all these guys are pretty. I mean, even Jerry Seinfeld. He's not a bad-looking guy, but he's yeah. Not, but he's he's like quirky handsome. Yeah, he's Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty good looking, but he's not like he's not like you wouldn't see him in the like as a woman you wouldn't see him in the street and go. Oh, ja ja Jamie Fox, he's a good looking guy. Jamie Fox, he's a very and good that's why guy. he's not top ten comedians in the world. John Mulaney, John Mulaney. John Mulaney. I was Johnny Mulaney. A lot yeah. of girls like John Mulaney. That's true. There's not many. I think it all, it's almost it almost hurts you if you go up there as like a fucking ten out of ten. I reckon a lot of people but would it, look at you and go, "What are you doing this it for?" It doesn't matter though. In the end, like I it it. it true. I mean, in the end, you just got to do be funny and just. I'm do not saying that up. I'm going to come out of this thing a ten because I still have the top half of my head yeah. working against me. But th this is another <laughs> thing. I need a. It's so many choices. I need to make sure that I suit the top half of my head. You know, so I'm. I find myself looking at celebrities and going, "Who looks at me from? Who looks like me from nose up?" But does your surgeon say that to you? Like, I'm. I'm curious what his instructions to you are. It's like, just look at some celebrities you like and tell me. I haven't had the conversation about this one because I'm so focused on the first one. Yes. But I do remember him saying, like, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna come. He he said, like, look, I'm not really allowed to say cure with this surgery because doctors can't say we guarantee a cure. You just for your, shouldn't for, say for, your, for your sleep, sleep condition. apnea. Yes. But, he, but he goes, but I've never had someone come back and say it's worse. I've never had someone come back and say it's not better like than what it was before. So okay. he's like, this is as close as I can get as a doctor to saying I'll cure you. Yeah. Um, and But also another thing to consider is a lot of people get this purely for cosmetic reasons. Like I'm a, I'm a doctor because I want to help you, but I also do this just to make people look better. So you will come out of this with a much stronger jawline and chin. You will look a lot better. He actually goes... He emphasized that. He said this to me. He goes... Uh, it seems an unusual thing to emphasize when, for you, the main motivation is yeah. to, to remedy your sleep apnea. Well, I, as someone who's never really looked at themselves and gone, I, I, I've, I've had thoughts like I would like to be less skinny. I've never looked at my face and gone, I would like this, I would like that. So I went to this doctor and he goes, we we're talking about, he was describing my facial structure and why he going like what you have is a, is a is a recessed jaw and he goes and what do a lot of people with recessed jaws have and I go sleep apnea and he goes a beard because you got no chin so you've given yourself one with a beard and I was like oh well thanks man would you like twenty thousand dollars <laughs> <He's> <laughs> he gonna, just like bullied me he's gonna get it yeah he goes well you've you've got a, you've got no chin you see and I was like well thanks man that wasn't what I was here for but thank you for for bullying me anyway. And just to clarify, what maybe you've already said this a few times. Though, no, on, this on is good. I think but, everyone else in my life has been hearing about this for like a whole year but, or more. You, you, you. I like having an outsider to ask. I guess the questions that maybe other people what, haven't. What, on what's podcast. what's like the the idiot's guide to sleep apnea in the most so, 
Basically, my jaw is too far back. Your tongue is attached to your jaw, right? The, mu the whole muscle is attached to, to basically here, your jaw. And when I'm on my back, because my jaw is back, my tongue is back and it covers my airway. Yeah. Um, so the cure to that is to just move the tongue forward. The only way to do that is to move the jaw forward. Um, so when I, when I breathe in, my tongue covers my throat and I suffocate. I did a sleep study and when I was on my back, I stopped breathing 47 times an hour for between three seconds over 60 seconds like it's over 60 seconds yeah it's pretty horrific would, i have a and, recording and, and you would wake up like <gasps> i wouldn't wake up that's the thing so i would just suffocate for seven eight nine hours and then wake up like not rested at all because i would never reach rem sleep like that deep restorative sleep so i'm like it's gone a lot better now because i'm using a cpap machine but I, w I was like so stressed because when you reach REM, that's when your body like kind of cleanses Rests. your body of yes. stress hormones and things like that. Yep. So I was like incredibly stressed. I was uh, like visibly tired all the time. My brain, I've had like horrible brain fog. I would fall asleep. Like, at, like one time at the comedy festival was probably at its worst, was very recently in the last six months. It took a real The downturn. last comedy festival we this just had? comedy festival backstage, I fell asleep at like 4 p.m. just on the floor. Wow. Everyone else running around doing sound check, yelling, making lots of noise. And I should be like very, very excited and caring about my show. I fell asleep and I was like, fuck, this is really bad. How long have you had sleep apnea for that it's been this severe? This severe, probably the last two years that, that it's been really bad, but it's been happening probably for five years and just getting gradually worse and worse and worse and worse. Because I used to be a real early riser. I would get up at... There's heaps of podcasts of me going, I only need six hours of sleep. I'm getting up at six. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. All this stuff. And then that just stopped. I was just, I just became unable to wake up in the mornings. And I just, I thought it was like, oh, I'm working a lot more. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm going out and performing at night. Yeah. But I was kind of doing that shit anyway. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, you know, I'm doing a lot more. I'm more successful. Maybe it's just like stress and I'm using more brain power or whatever. <laughs> I kind of dismissed it. Wasn't until I moved in with my girl that she go, she noticed like you are suffocating every night because I lived at, with, at my parents' place. So yeah. she would only stay over every now and then. Yeah. So she never really noticed it. She didn't think it was happening ever. She knew that I snored. Yeah. And I think Keelan toured with me for years and I always snored, but it wasn't, yeah. I noticed, the, I noticed you getting sleepy like uh, end of, start of 2020, you just wouldn't rock up to work on time ever. Yeah. 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 2020 was when it got very bad. Wow. Um, and I'm not sure why, I don't, I'm not sure why it gets worse. But I know it gets worse with age, but I don't know specifically why. Cause it's usually something that only very obese people or very old people get. Yeah. It's very rare for like a man my age to have this. Are there any other, like could stress like accelerate the process? Yeah, probably. Sleep, yeah. Like stress is like a cause of sleep apnea for some people. So I think that stress with COVID and stuff probably made it a lot worse. Yeah. Um, but but it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you get stressed and then you don't sleep and then you are unable to de-stress yeah, and then yeah. it like goes around a loop. So I, it was like, it got to a point where, especially in the last six months, where it was actually destroying my life. Like really bad. I wasn't able to focus. I would... I couldn't like talk to people or remember anything. Wow. Uh, like so many times on Luke and Lewis, we would joke about me not being able to remember names or faces or phone numbers. And I wonder how much of that is me and how much of that is like just my sleep apnea getting worse and worse and worse. Wow. Probably both. Yeah. But definitely sleep apnea making it way worse yeah. than it should be. So it was like, yeah, was and still is like destroying my life. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best personal groomer in the game. Now let's have a look at uh, what to say slash what not to say in our brief here. Uh, don't say, well, can't say any of that stuff. Um, uh, but I can say this. Uh, it's waterproof. The trimmers, uh, they reduce foot odor. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer helps reduce nicks and cuts. It also reduces the risk of ingrown hairs and the risk of grooming accidents. Uh, please add your own opinions about the product. I like it. I think they're really good. It's something that I use every day. They've never really died on me. They've never broken. They've never cut me. Uh, it, it's They're good. Um, what else? Any content you create about Manscaped or a product must reflect your honest opinions, findings, beliefs, or experiences. 
Uh, well, that, that, that's all true. I'm, I'm ticking the boxes there. Uh, be transparent to your audience. Your audience should know that this is a partnership where you receive free product and slash or payment in exchange for promotion. I was paid money and I got, I got free product, which is the best of both worlds because if I only got money, I'd probably buy this with it. Um, what else do we have? Facts and opinions. Facts and claims about the products must be true and should be approved in advance by Manscaped. Do not make, do not make false or misleading statements. Uh, the the Lawnmower 4.0 definitely won't let you have sex with Megan Fox, but when you do have sex with someone else that's in your range, you know, you'll look nice down there. Um, do not make false or misleading statements. Otherwise, ensure you are only expressing your thoughts and opinions. What do you think about Manscaped, Rosie? No, don't express. These are my thoughts and my opinions, okay? Didn't you, did you not just listen to what I said? Okay? You, what, you trying to fucking mess this up for me? Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. You must feel good. I mean, I know it's... It's going to be a big process to yeah. get the whole thing done, but you must feel good about the prospect of improving the yeah, situation. Hundred percent. I feel very, very relieved. It's going to be like a really hard road, very expensive, painful journey to get through, and I won't be able to like do stand up, which is always my like thing of like, oh, at least I can do that. I won't be able to do that for yeah. a long time. But yeah, I'm so excited. How, to be how, done how long with are it. we talking? The first surgery. I'm a shoe, I'm planning for six weeks off. Like we've we've filmed six weeks of videos and almost six weeks of yeah. podcasts, I think. Um, so we're planning for six weeks off. Doctors are saying like three to four, four weeks off. Yeah, that's great. I think that's wrong. Okay. I think, but even six weeks, oh, and and then you're good after six weeks. You think? I'll be swollen and I might still be in pain, but I'll be able to return to work. Yeah. Um. But but. With the gap tooth and the expander in the roof of my mouth, I have a I have a huge fear that I'm going to be unbearable to listen to. I might have a fucked lisp. My mouth is going. The braces didn't affect me too much. It's made, it made me sound a little bit different, I think. And sometimes I stumble on my words a bit more. But it's, yeah, it's, I'm trying to just listen to having you now. more metal in my mouth, and especially the roof of my mouth. I think is going to, and the gap tooth too, I think is going to really affect me. Maybe certain sounds or words, but it's not, it's, it's pretty not, negligible. Difference. Some S's are, are a little bit different. What does Keelan think? Yeah. It's yeah. Some people notice it, some people don't. Very, so, uh, it's almost that if you're looking for the difference, you might be like, oh yeah, maybe yeah. that's the braces. Yeah, a little bit. But they, uh, they have affected me much less than I thought. And I think I have, I also, I suppose I have a lot more motivation than the average person to, relearn how to talk it's like how an athlete will recover from an injury yeah, much yeah. better than the average person because they have to yes and they'll really focus they rely on, on their body yeah if i you can't rely on if speaking. i can't fix this ankle my dream's fucked so i'm going to do everything the doctor says you, yeah you know when you get sick you don't fucking take all the antibiotics yeah yeah you know i think but i suppose that if it gets bad if it is as bad as i fear it is i'll get a speech therapist if i have to i guess to teach me how to speak with all this shit in my mouth but I just kind of think like, you know, look like that in the roof of my mouth. It might be bad. It's going to be amazing when it all gets taken out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that will, be That good. will be another relearning as well. Well, yeah. It will probably happen organically. But. Well, I'll have a whole new mouth size. Like the roof of my mouth will be huge. And then also the position of my tongue will be vastly different. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look different. I'm going to sound different. I'm going to feel different. Like it's going to be over for everyone listening to this show. <laughs> like when I like, I've been doing all of this and I haven't slept or had a dream for four years. <laughs> you know, you, and I've been like a like a like a like a a hard six, a soft seven. <laughs> you wait till I come out of this surgery, being like awake and a, and an eleven. It's over <laughs> for you. It's over for everyone listening to this show. I'm I'm actually getting um, contractors over. We're going to put bars on the windows. To keep all the women out. <laughs> it's a concern of mine. You laugh. This is my life. Well, the you can laugh because you're going to be lining up. Absolutely. Yeah. There's going to be prams lined up down the street. All these single mothers trying to get into the house. Um, you said you hadn't dreamt in... I haven't had a dream for four years. Really? Like a, like a dream. And, and you remember dreaming before, obviously. Yeah, and, yeah I used to have them frequently. Not frequently, but like, you know, a, a normal amount, I think. I think I can... I've maybe had like two ever two ever ever two dreams 
since it got like very since like maybe tw- 2019 yeah probably yeah do you know what the, are you going to share the dream one of them yes happened ages ago i talked about it on luke and lewis show uh and i and i remember it because i was like oh my god i had a dream right i was i was crazy so i was eating pussy <laughs> right jazz I was eating. I was Am eating. I asking the wrong questions. I was eating pussy. Yes, I don't okay. know. It was like it was like nondescript. It was just pussy, right? Yeah, yeah. I was eating pussy, ass up, like really getting. Into, I'm ass up, and then your your, your my ass, is, ass up. is up. Yes, okay. I'm. So she's on. So pussy's on her back. I don't know who she is. Yeah, but but she's having a Isn't great your time. Ass always up when you're eating pussy. Yeah, but for some for some reason, I really distinctly remember very high up. You could see like your, a yoga you pose. You could see yourself or feel. Your I could really feel that my ass was, okay, was okay, up as okay, hell. Yeah, you know? okay, like sure. probably more up than it needed to be. Sure, all right, I was entering right. yoga pose territory. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm eating pussy, and uh, and then I shit. Oh, yeah. okay. That so that first bit of information was important. Yeah. for what comes next, and then I and then I woke up. I didn't actually shit in real life, but yeah, okay. in the dream I pooed, and I thought, "Fuck, that's embarrassing. I better wake up." Oh, really? Yeah. And what? How did the person react? I don't know. As soon as I pooed, I woke oh, up. You were out and of Found that. out that I didn't the poo. Plug. Okay. I woke up going, "Oh my god, I've shit myself." Sweet relief. And then, and then I didn't. Like, thank God. Wow, the dream. Yeah. That was the living the dream or not living the dream. Not living the dream. Thank God. Thank you know? God. I would have loved the first half of that dream, not the second half much. So I'm happy to not have it at all. <laughs> But that was the that's the only dream that I can remember in the last like four or five years. And when did this happen? This dream. This happened in two thousand twenty. Oh wow, we're yeah. talking like two two years ago. Yeah, and, and that's the last dream I remember. Really, and then I and then before that, I I may have had one, or but I I don't remember. So I'm just going to call it like four or five years. I haven't had yeah. a dream. Yeah, has anyone interpreted this this dream for you? I would love if anyone would love to like like comment in down below like their interpretation of me eating pussy and then pooing. This well, is in the middle of a lockdown. Well, if that means well, anything, mo- mo- most most like uh, I I think most like interpretations you don't you don't interpret it literally. No, you take so what? so so something's coming in through you. Yeah, something's mm-hmm. going right, and you're going you're going for it yeah. hard. Yeah, you're really. Digging deep. Yeah, what does this say about me and my life, Joseph? Well, you commit. Yeah. You get in there, man, yeah. and you do the work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're prepared to go harder and longer and like yeah. maybe commit more than most other people can. Mate, some guys don't do that at all. And and you you are prepared to express your devotion mm-hmm. as much as you can. And I was enjoying it. I wasn't and, like, oh, what a chore. And 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 maybe the, the ass up, that's that's quite a a vulnerable position mm. because I know I said it's always up, but you said it was like noticeably it was up. Quite, it was you, up you could, as hell. You could be on uh, the end of the bed. You could yeah. protect that part of you. You could be lying down flat. Yeah. So so it was really up. Yeah. So you were very exposed. Yeah. So when you commit to mm. something, you mm. also do it in a way that's quite vulnerable, yeah. quite exposed. Yeah. And then what are you killing? You got, you got to... Oh, shit. Oh, the, the interpretation of the dream is common? Yeah, this, this dream is very common. Okay. Wait, shitting while, while performing oral sex? What? Okay. Shitting while so having sex. My, oral sex. Can I tell mine? My, my, not, not specifically oral sex, but sex. I, so I thought that maybe my interpretation is, right? Because this is just during lockdowns, right? Yeah. I'm having a great time and then something unexpected happens that ruined everything. Lockdown. Really? <laughs> oh my okay. god, Mr. Dream Weaver here. I think this is quite specific to you. Is that you're going through lockdown, yeah. and all of a sudden, all your money is just gone out the window. Mm. Dreams of poo and bed. Um, I think you tell me that you wouldn't be making financial, or you are having financial problems. Mm. Partner is involved. Oh yeah. That is what. That's yeah. What I'm that's well. That's that's hundred percent correct. It's exactly what I was going through at that time. Wow. Of like. I want to chase my dream, but but I've shit myself, <laughs> and and also there was a lockdown. I was uh, I I kind of was, I was I wasn't right, but I wasn't wrong either. No, I liked it. I liked yeah. what you were saying. There. I just I added that, a little bit of texture yeah. to yeah what Keelan was saying. No, I I think I think that everyone's correct here. I think yeah, there yeah. are no right answers. This is what it, dream interpretations are all about. Well, that's 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 pretty interesting. That I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think we we figured something out there. But it, 
or, or I not. Can't, I can't wait for my first dream back. That's going to be significant. I might have, I might, when they put me under, I might have some fucking sick ones. I might get I like think four years with, of dreaming with, with, out of the way. The, is, is it oxycotton or oxy... Oxycotton, how do we, oxytocin. How do we say it? Kill it? Oxys, bra. I think... To- oxytocin? Yeah. I think that's it. Well, whatever it is, that will make you very lucid. Yeah, right. And and Yeah, cuz I've never I've never I've never broken anything. I've never had a surgery. There's also oxycontin. So right. They must be different. Did you um did you have any sick dreams before coming? Were you afraid you might lose your Here's the thing. I won't be able to speak. So I'm sweet. So this this is the thing. I was I I was genuinely looking forward to the hilarious video of me off my face saying dumb shit. You literally won't be able to say anything? No. My whole mouth uh, is d- detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. For, uh, how, for, how, for how long? A few days. For a few days, yeah. So I think I think that my my secrets are safe, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> that's... Uh, unfortunately for everyone else. Goes to my grave. Yeah, that's you're gonna be feeling it because I I had it I had it because you've been through I, a, that they, a tooth thing. Well, you've you, got a fake you, front tooth. Yeah, and what they had to do before they put because what happened to you? How did you lose the front tooth? I I had it. I smashed it as a kid. Yeah, but then the the root became rotten over like twenty, ah, 20 so it years. Just died. Yeah, yeah. So it's like this is no good now. So yeah. you need we need to put another root in. Yeah, but we need new cartilage. So who doesn't like getting a root in? Yeah, exactly. We we love that. Mm. And uh, but to get the cartilage in, that's 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 the most painful thing because not dissimilar to yours, maybe not as hectic as breaking yeah. the whole thing, but they had to cut a hole in the roof of my mouth and put some substance in there that would become cartilage over time. Oh, like stem cells almost. Yeah. Wow. So so they they cut in they put yeah. put it in yeah. then they seal you know stitch it back up but as it's happening i mean you're having a general anesthetic so you're completely yeah. under but i'm gone i was just a local but you i could just fuck fe- that he feel that it's like why is there like a flood in my mouth right honestly and it's i just don't like, think i could do that and then you're spitting this, this like pure blood it's just like pouring out oh my god and uh, i don't think i could do i reckon i would freak out and you're like oh, it's like it's just like a waterfall of blood in yeah and this is a little bit disconcerting, but when with the oxy, whatever it is, afterwards, you're very, very high. Mm. And my show for the comedy festival. What is it like? Well, you're very because just- like I've I've like genuinely I've never I don't even I don't even have an idea of like I've never I feel like a lot of people who have smoked weed could be like oh yeah like being high but more than that yeah. I have no concept of it at all. Yeah, I mean, I might have. Are you like floaty? Comparison to mushrooms or something. But yeah, definitely very floaty. Yeah. Uh, And you just think differently. Like, for example, when I was, it was, I had this operation done a month before the comedy festival. It's all the people that like aggressively tuned out five minutes into the NFT chat are not (laughs) getting this gold. And that's what you fucking get for dismissing new technologies. That's so funny. Um, yeah, I had it a month before and I was looking at bits because I couldn't really speak for a few... Looking maybe, at jokes you'd written. Yes. Yeah. And the joke I had about being a Japanese woman <laughs> in a previous life, Yeah, yeah. it was like a two-minute joke. And yeah. I thought, how can I extend this joke? Yeah. And I thought the only funny way to extend this joke would be if I actually had Japanese women yes. in the show yeah. as part of the bit. And that I... So I that was an oxy joke. That was an oxy joke. <laughs> That was that was yeah. purely born out of oxy, right. and and whilst on oxy, yeah. I I I searched older Japanese ladies in Melbourne, yeah, who, and started messaging them on Facebook, and yeah. that all happened in the cocoon of <laughs> of oxy. So what you're saying is, it what being off your face on pain pills is like is like when I was at your show yes and like three Japanese women came out of nowhere <laughs> and turned out to be part of the show yes that's what it feels like that, that, that is that's, I can't wait that's the vision yeah that's, literally the vision emerged while I was on Oxy yeah, yeah. great yeah so I it's mean, gonna that's, make me push boundaries with my stand up yeah it, it is funny just as a thought experiment maybe to have things oh, 
should I, should I re- write a joke? Yeah, or, or like yeah. return to old bits or ideas mm. that you've like, I want to... That you never ex- got to work. Explore this. Yeah. yeah. And, and be like, and then see what... Because you'll come at it with a different perspective for sure. And how how long, because mine might be longer, but I how think long were will, you on pain pills for? Two, two or three days for me. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, so I mean, they're maybe really... five for me? They're, they're, they're telling you to like get off it. As soon as possible. Well, you don't want to get hooked. Because yeah. they're so addictive. Well, I know a lot of people that yeah. have, that have they just went in for hospital and then they came out and they just, ha- they're still doing it and they're getting a black market and it's a, it's a hook. But the, the only thing is, it, it is a nice feeling, but it, it sort of disables you from doing anything. anything else. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's even people who have like beaten heroin and then 10 years later they break their legs and then they do oxy and they go... Fuck, and they're hooked again. Really? It's the same shit. Fuck, yeah. Uh, wow, I didn't know know that. But it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know. You, you'll have a good time. Great. I'm looking, yeah. it's a it's a strong place to start. You know, a lot of people will go, I'll have one beer. Yeah, you're start. starting at the top. Yeah, I'm starting right at the top. Yeah. What if, what if I, genuinely, what if I go, this is, this is fucking sick. <laughs> I was wrong. What am I doing? And I and it's actually not over for you; it's over for me. <laughs> and I turn into the world's most handsome heroin addict. Like, you know, who was that guy that that uh, that that went to prison and then he t- he came out being an international model? It's going to be me. Who but was in reverse. that guy? I've never heard about this bloke. Uh, an American guy. He he did. I don't know what crime he committed. Probably something fucking heinous. Something. Jeremy Meeks. Yeah, Jeremy Meeks. That's right. He. This mugshot went viral because he was like really sexy. Yeah, looking. What did Jeremy Meeks do? It was a pallet oh, okay. Like gang shit. It's, he was it's, for yeah, so he's kind of cool and hot yeah, anyway, and dangerous. And he ended yeah. up being like actually like a very well paid, successful international model. Oh wow! I think he's still doing that now, off one headshot. Mate, that is going to be me when I post, when the, when the doctor, because he didn't post his mugshot, someone else did. When the doctor posts, well, after my healing is done, like the, the before and after picture, my after is going to go nuts. Could you imagine after all this shit I've talked, I come out and they fuck me up? But this is... But, and they go, but this, you fucking... The, the real transformation is going to be like a year from now, yeah? Longer than that because... Oh, yeah, maybe I'm 18 be months. Very, very swollen. I would say, I would say I'm going to... I'll find out what I look like yes. six months after the second surgery when all the swelling's gone down. Oh, wow. So at least 18 months. Man, I've been Could watching- Could be two years. It, yeah. I've been watching like um, vlogs of other people who have had the same surgeries. And one guy, everyone's a little bit different, but one guy was like, I have, it's been f- like five month update and he looks great. He looks, he's still got a gap tooth, but he's fine. Uh, it's almost closed. And he goes, I haven't had solid food yet. And that was just on the top. I think, yeah, that was the top. In America, five, they do it a little bit different. Five months and he hasn't had food. No, just liquids. What, what, are, you, like what are you anticipating? I'm anticipating two weeks. No food. No food, just like liquid. we're getting a blender. My mum's going to come and live here for like three or four days Yeah, just to make sure I don't die. <coughs> Help Jazz out. Yeah, that's very sweet. And she's bringing a blender. We already have a blender, but there's going to be two. Wow, two so blenders. All I'm going to hear upstairs is... So blenders and soups, smoothies and soups. I've got basically. like a weight gain shake yeah. that I've got, and then we're also going to look You're at... You're trying to gain weight in this process as well? Well, no, I think I'm going to not. I'm going to need the extra calories. Yeah, yeah, right? sure, okay. Because I yep, can't... Yep, yep. Otherwise, I'm going to have to blend up fucking meat. No, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with shit. you. Yeah. Because that, that, that's a thing. Like, what, sh- what do I eat? Blended potatoes, I guess. Yeah, what do you eat? What, what, what's a typical D- Lewis Spears diet? Like now? Yes. I'll have, uh, well, now I haven't been eating much at all because my teeth are in so much pain from the braces. Yeah. But before braces, I would have like porridge in the morning. So you can still have that? Yeah? I guess blended porridge, yeah, for sure. Blended yeah, porridge? Put- you don't need to blend porridge. I cannot <laughs> chew. I can't chew anything. What's blended porridge like? It's a pretty fucking, blended. What do you mean? That's, that's Can you what blend a, porridge? That's what a thick shake is, dude. People put oats in thick shakes. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, they put the, the raw oats in thick shakes yeah. and blend it. But if you make porridge yeah. and they you soak the, the yeah. oats yeah. and then cook them, yeah. then they, they don't need to be blended. Am I wrong? I don't know. Well, no, but here's the thing, because... 
there's there's actually potential, probably not, but maybe my jaw will be wired shut too. And that's when so wired d- shut? Maybe. It depends on after the surgery they go You need like a, a drip? Well, what they do, <laughs> the jazz is going to this is how I'm gonna eat. Even if my jaw's not wired shut, this is how I'm eating. This jazz is, a, is this is a possibility? This is po- yeah, for sure. Wired shut. I think actually the second one I am definitely wired shut after. Why? So that I don't move and snap my jaw accidentally. It just needs... Because it's going to be... They cut here in half, detach the whole bone, and then they pull it forward, and then they get metal, and they bolt the metal there. And then there's this empty gap that the bone slowly closes. And then it becomes bone. It's fucked, right? But while that empty space is there... If I if I move it, I could fuck it up. So they will have to wire it shut. And this is how I'm going to eat in both. How do you feel? How do you feel? I mean, I feel. Oof, I don't. How I, do you feel about that? I I feel like it's happening to someone else. <laughs> I feel like they tell right, me right that, now. Right now. Yeah. Right now, I yes. feel like it's. I'm not scared. It's future Lewis. It's his. It's his problem. Yeah. Fuck yeah, that guy. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> fuck that handsome motherfucker. Yeah. Who cares? It's not my problem. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I'm not anxious about it. I think it's going to suck. I don't know. I don't, I don't really have any strong thoughts about it. But this is just a possibility. <clears throat> There's possibility. a lot of variables by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. This is why I can't really... I feel like I haven't processed it too much. But also maybe I have because I knew this needed to happen uh, about a, six months into the first lockdown. So like 2020. Yeah. I knew that I was diagnosed and I needed this. So I've kind of like had a long time that's when you had the diagnosis yeah Yeah. so i'm honestly i'm just kind of upset that it that i wasn't able to get the surgery during lockdown which would be the like i'm not working of course working of course now now it's it's pretty tough for me to watch everyone else bounce back from covid yeah and i'm still stuck in purgatory for yeah like 18 months yeah that's tough for me but that's yeah in in terms of the surgery i'm just like i'm kind of like relieved because this shit's been like destroying my fucking life like everyone around me since I started using the CPAP machine, which isn't a full cure, it's just made like a big difference. It's going, oh my God, you look different. You, you act yeah, different. Yeah, amazing. Like How I'm, long have you had this the machine for? A month. And it's like oh, changed wow. my life. Wow. I work, I've been waking up at like seven. That's unheard of. Wow. And you feel like just- Like Kieran said, I would just like, sometimes I would never be on time. And we start at 10, like we start late. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to start at 10. Yeah. Or sometimes at all, I would just be like, I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm so fucked. You've noticed a big difference, Keelan? Yeah, huge. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Podcast is funnier than ever. <laughs> 100% maybe way less funny, I think. Really? Yeah. Or, or I, I felt like I was... Um, you, just, you were just more tired. <clears throat> I think if you watch the first Luke and Lewis back uh, after this, uh, in here, after the seatbelt machine, I think I actually was talking way too much uh, and trying too hard because I, I was in the habit of like when I would do podcasts, I'd be like, I got to fucking really try hard to be funny. Yeah. I see. And then when I wasn't as tired as I had been, but I was trying the same amount, I think I came across as annoying a little bit and saying too much. Yeah. Cause, cause I was having more thoughts. So now I'm finding myself like, like not saying things, man, not just wait. That's Whereas good. Before I would say whatever the fuck I could think of. Cause sometimes I would think of three things an hour. Shit, man. <clears throat> How what is is this this sleep apnea is mm. is can that is that a hereditary thing or what are the things that cause it other than obesity causes it? Well, obviously that's not you. No, it's that's, it's, that's it's, just, it's your receded jaw is what's so causing fat, it. It'll put pressure on your windpipe. Yeah, so sleep so that will cause it. Also, bodybuilders will get it. Same same issue, just weight on their neck. Really, if they have a really really strong neck, yeah, a lot of bodybuilders have very bad sleep apnea. Because they're they're just too big for their own for their own good. Uh, old people will get it, and that's just because when you you know like when you become wrinkly, your skin sags. So does everything on the inside of you as well. So it might just cover your airway. So old people will get it. Is but for me, it's purely bone structure. My skull's fucked. So you must be very young to to get it to yeah. be getting it. I went to the CPAP machine place to hire one because I couldn't afford one. I went to hire one. So you're currently hiring it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. These surgeries are very expensive. <laughs> I went to hire one and I was like 
the youngest person in there by minimum 30 years. And it, everyone in there was like at least 60 and uh, 200 kilos. 60 and 200 yeah, kilos. Yeah. It's like it's purely yeah, yeah. a fat plus. man's disease. A fat old man's disease. I mean, 100 is like up there. 200 kilograms is... Big boys in that store. Are you kidding? That's no. That's crazy. No. And I rate severe. Like the doctor, the sleep st- study specialist was like, I have, I've never seen this in like someone your age and weight. Like this is crazy. It's Does your height have anything to do with it? Maybe. I don't think so. I think it's, I, it's all my jaw. Like the doctor showed me an x-ray and you can literally see my, uh, your my jo- jaw your- and my airway. My airway is, he goes, he showed me like this is a healthy airway. Mine was about one third the size. And, and when I was doing the x-ray, I was awake. So you can kind of see how it would. But on, like your jaw just seems normal. Like looking at it. Yeah, I, I've never really, I don't think I have a particularly strong jaw, but I've never looked at it and gone, oh, that's really, like, because I've seen some real back ones, you go, like with their teeth where they're hanging over. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it's very bad. Yeah. It's severe, says the doctor. So, well, yeah, I don't know. would say that. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm getting fucking scammed. Yeah, I, hope, I don't think so. I, th- I mean, one of the, I don't know if, I didn't think you knew this, but I just looked yeah. it up. When Jay showed me, he's he's a he's a he's a doctor as well. He's a yeah. dentist. Yeah. He studied dentistry and yes. a medical degree. Yes, which makes him insane. Oh yeah, but, but also he's he's like a mega mega nerd. So hopefully knows what the what the yes. f he is doing when he goes to work on you. I wonder if I can find this audio recording of me sleeping. Oh, is it? Did you put it on the roadcaster? Oh, can we need to plug into speakers? Oh, no, I took it off. Okay, all right, epic. Nice, sweet. Do you have it on the computer? Maybe we just skip to the video where I play it, right? I'll play this for you and get your thoughts. Because Jazz... This is you, this is Lewis sleeping, recorded. Yeah. But, this but is before, before, before I was diagnosed. So Before this. Because Jazz kept telling me, man, you're, you're snoring heaps. And then she started going, you're like, you stop breathing. I'm like... Does it affect nah. her sleep? No, because not now, but it used to affect her a lot um all right okay this is from the this is from the video right um but i'm choking on my own tongue i have here a recording um from the sleep study of me struggling to breathe this is how bad uh, Mm -hmm. my breathing is so this silence you're hearing is me not breathing i'm trying that's one breath and then an exhale, and then haven't breathed in, didn't breathe in there. There it is. So you can hear my tongue covering the airway. There it is. So I'm breathing in. This is a big, still haven't breathed in. Still not breathing. Still not breathing. Are you breathing through your... Mouth or nose is that? Still not breathing. Still not breathing. Still not. There it is. So that's me going. That's what that is. My tongue covering yeah, my throat. Wow. You can kind of make that noise yeah. yourself, and you can feel your tongue, yeah. like covering Whoa. your airway. That's that's me every night. And and how does the machine you're on now affect? So anything. the machine is like a thing that it covers my whole mouth and then it goes underneath my nose and it has two holes and it and when it detects me not breathing in, it uh, it's attached to a tube that's attached to like a generator and yeah. when it detects me not breathing in, it shoots air up my nose and down my throat and forces me to breathe and it's made an insane difference and with that sensation you're able to stay asleep yes i mean if i can sleep through that like me not breathing and suffocating yeah well i used to wake up with like adrenaline rushes like back in covid days and we we thought before i was diagnosed i must be like crazy stressed but it didn't really make sense because the first bit of covid was kind of fun but i would wake up literally every now and then i'll wake up "Ah, ah," and like ready to fight this huge adrenaline rush. You'd be like, ah, you make yeah. that sound. Yeah. I think that I would stop breathing for so long, my body would go, you're dying. Yeah, wow. And like jumpstart itself, wow. I think. Wow. 
you thought you were being attacked. It was like fight or f- flight Yeah, response. yeah, I would, it would, that's exactly what it felt like, like fight or flight, like in the middle of the night. I wake up, ah! And I think it was And you that. had no idea why. No idea why. I didn't know why. Me and Jazz could never... We thought it was like maybe noises, but it sometimes it would happen for like no reason. Were, were there any dreams or like instances of you waking up where you would like shout out because you thought you were being like, ah, attacked? One time after a dream, I woke up and I was like, I've pooed. <laughs> no, I no, I, I never. It was never like the result of a dream or anything like that. I, I, I don't know why it is, but I, but it hasn't happened since, since. So I think it's that. Yeah. Um, and before the CPAP machine, I actually used to wear a thing on my chest that would vibrate if it detected me on my back, and then I would wake up, uh, and then that stopped working. So we got one that went around my neck that would vibrate when I was on my back, and then. And then on my, I would stay on my side, but it started to happen on my side even. So wow. even that stopped working. So the CPAP machine has worked heaps, but we kind of feel like the reason why I'm getting this surgery is I think that's not going to work forever. Like I think if, I, if I'm this bad now yeah. at 28 and like a very healthy person, not obese, I reckon the doctor was like, yeah, you, in your 60s, this will kill you. Yeah, wow. So it's like I need to get it now while I'm able to heal yeah. as well. Yeah, and probably able to heal a lot better than you would yeah. be, obviously, the older you get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank God for that. Yes. Yeah. Has anyone in your family ever had anything remotely similar to this? I keep asking everyone. No one really has. I think my my mum has a more similar face structure to me, but she doesn't really like sleep like that. My dad has quite a strong chin. My brother actually got my dad's jawline, quite a strong chin, Yeah. Um, and he doesn't have it. Yeah. So I think I just got unlucky. I think. Wow. No one else seems to have it, so I might just be deformed. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. it's serious. Like, what would have happened back in the old days? You just you would have died at yeah. thirty. Yeah, yeah. I just would have. I just would have been a useless member of society. Although this fucking sleepy guy doesn't want to doesn't want to till the fields. Uh, that that probably happened so many times that like people just feeling shit about themselves, but they've Dude, got this legitimate. Since I put out the video, I've had so many guys and girls message me going, "Dude." I had no idea I had this until your video. Really? Yep, I've had so many people going, everything you explain, like the fogginess, falling asleep while reading or watching TV shows or at weird times, feeling exhausted no matter. I almost like in the video, I think I said the more I slept, the worse I felt because yeah. I would struggle like that for longer. Yeah, yeah. So I found that working, sleeping less was actually better for me. Everyone was going, oh man, you described my life and then they would get sleep studies. They'd come back to me like three days later going, dude, I have sleep apnea. So I think it's like a, a thing that you you just n- never would think that a young person could get that so many people have. Yeah. Which is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, uh, well, what, what sort of, I mean, you've got a younger, most of your audience is like yeah. under 30. Yeah. So most of these people under 30? All, all under 30 is like message, mostly men, but, but a few And they've girls. all been diagnosed now with sleep apnea. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say like, That's like amazing. five or 10 people have messaged me going, oh dude, you're describing my life. And then I would say 70%, like seven people have come back and gone, yeah, that was it. Thank you. That is incredible. Really cool. Yeah. That's very, very nice. Pretty wild. Of. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of the internet, you know? Like, yeah. you can kind of tell people, oh, this is my life. And people go, oh, fuck, that's me. And yeah. then they can fix a... Because I, if, if... Honestly, if I were single, I would have no idea still. Like, the only reason I went to the sleep study was because I, I slept with a girl every night. Wow. Who was like, you're dying in your sleep. Wow. And when we... Because when we lived... When we didn't live together, she had no idea. You know, I would just... Was it have, only after living together that it became she's a the parent? problem. You're right. It's her <laughs> fault. If I'm, that's the real issue, you know what? Cancel these surgeries. <laughs> Get this bloody broad out of my house. No, You're right. Because you've been together for a while. Yeah. But and it's only when she's like observing when you night sleeping, after night. When we're, when we're living together, it's yeah. a problem. Wow. All this stress in my life. I, 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 that's not the implication I yeah. was making. I just want to say that for the yeah. record. But yeah. that is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And, and very lucky for you. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah. I'm very grateful that Jazz is very good with like, go to the doc. You know what men are like. Yeah, yeah. Going to the doctor's gay. Yeah. If I go to the doctor, that means I'm telling him that I'm weak. Yeah. And if I'm weak, I'm gay. Yeah, it's a bit like that. I mean, I, th- I think I'm not so much like that. Also, I, I, I think, think men are just worse. Important. Even taking that notion away, men are still worse at taking care of themselves. Yes. Just, My dad is 
my dad is the, why would I go to a doctor type? That's yeah. him all over. My dad is even like, why would I take my dog to the vet? <laughs> yeah. I had to recently force him to take our old dog to the vet. I'm like, man, you you have to for her. It's just, just a dog. Yeah. Yeah. How old's your old your parent folks dog? Uh, she'd be like maybe 16. It's pretty old. That's an old for a dog. Do- old dog. Yeah. 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 She's she's near the end. Now. Yeah, 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 it's very sad. That's that's one hundred and two in dog years. Yeah, very old. Yeah. Seven sixteenths. That's yeah. Is that no? That's one hundred and twelve. Yeah, she's an old girl. Yeah, that's an epic age. Yeah, she might go this year. Rest in peace. When it happens. Premature, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. How um, old? How old are your parents? <laughs> how old are my parents? <laughs> They're uh, they are sixty. I was going to ask Keelan. And I was like, Keelan doesn't have that mm. at his at his hand. Uh, 66? Rest in peace. I, think. I thought we were talking about your, your your parents' dogs, not your parents. I just I just thought if we, were, if we were going there, I thought we were just... Oh, you were going yeah. straight for my parents. <laughs> I thought I was going for your parents' dog. <laughs> it's 112. Well, do your parents have any old dogs? Any old pets? No, they don't have old pets. No, okay. Just young pets? Um, My mum has a young pet. Yeah. How old? You're going to rest in peace. How old? <laughs> uh... How any health any health issues though? Oscar with the pet? is like Oscar? one. Oscar one. Is one. One. Yeah. How's the fencing around the property? Could the, could he get out onto the road? Uh, he could. He could. Keelan came rest over the peace. other day. He he, he was out. Yeah, he ran away. He ra- yeah. Ra- mate, rest in peace. <laughs> Just getting in early. I'm not getting you and dogs 112. Yeah, well, whatever, man. <laughs> Don't, it's a premature this, rest in this peace. Dog seven I in have dog hope. Years. I have hope. He's seven in dog years. Yours is 112. Yeah, dog. when she's a tough bitch, all right? Okay, okay. I'm sorry. You'd already said it's this is its last year. Yeah, We're that was my through fault. The year. Yeah, that's my fault. Well, you, you basically said yeah. it's in its final six months. My fault. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm going under the knife soon. Rest in peace. No, I hope you're okay, man. Me too. Yeah. I would. I would love to. I would love to feel what it's like to wake up and go. Oh, what a good sleep! <laughs> when was the last time you had that sensation? Uh, I can't remember. Actually, you can't remember it. I cannot remember. Maybe, maybe not good sleep, but like, oh, I feel different. Was like the second night I used the CPAP machine. Oh, I wouldn't that's say cool. I had a good sleep. I just felt like radically different. Second night. Yeah. Yeah. After the second night, but yeah, I'll let you know when I have my first good snooze. Please let me know. Yeah, <laughs> let all the people know. Yeah, don't want to know. Well, what it, what what have you got coming up four weeks from today? But currently for the for the listeners of this, um, well, I'm going to record a special later in the year, directed and produced and edited by our man Keelan here. Mike Keelan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a date locked in yet, or do we? we do October. October twenty nine. Mate, yeah. can I open? You can. Awesome. Is is awesome. is it is a possibility. October 29, yeah. 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 That's, the date we picked that. that's exciting, man. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Are you sure you want to do it? Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> no, Keelan's, Keelan's great. Keelan's yeah. great. So, yeah, that's exciting. October 29, so this may be June-ish, so we've still got a few months to go. That's very, very cool. For, do you have any plans of where you're going to release it or...? Uh, I probably on online. Yeah, I'll have to have you back when it's actually out. Oh, thanks, brother. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. So we're just getting details. That's good. Together now. Any? Can I look forward to any Japanese women? Any oxy inspired material? Or you yeah, don't I'll, know spe- yet? I'll speak. To, I'll speak. I'll probably speak to you. I'll speak to a bunch of people like yeah. which bits I should have in. Yeah. What I should do during during this special. Yeah, that's okay. As long as um, as long as it says written by Lewis Spears in the credits, <laughs> I'm happy with that. Sure thing. All right, great. Well, keep an eye out for that in October. And other other than that, where can people find you? Uh, on Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, all the usual spots. And well, Joseph Green, uh, everyone, yeah. thank you very much for coming on the show and and uh, just being in shock and awe about my head. Yeah, mate. Wishing you all the best. Rest in peace. <laughs> Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. God bless people. How grim would it be if I'm dead right now? Bye.